Hey folks, Brendan here from Blue Light. How are we all doing today? Uh, coming from you, uh, coming to you live from Spain. Um, I'll tell you about that story in a moment. It's a right shaggy dog story. Actually, a shaggy cat story. And uh, so, in this short video, in this Facebook Live, I'm going to talk to you about some work I've been doing today. Yes, I'm in Spain and I'm doing some work, um, all about the new national SIFT situational judgment test. Uh, so first, just whilst I'm waiting for some of you to come and join us, uh, let's just see where I am today. Uh, not in York by the River Ouse, but in Almeria in uh, sunny Spain. It's the evening now, uh, just settling down to uh, one of these. Uh, there it is. Um, <laughs> you get blue tonic water in Spain, so there's a gin and tonic. And that's what I rewarded myself with um, in the afternoon. Uh, having done a whole day of work really so I'm, I'm very pleased actually to get this this work out for my clients because what's happened is the College of Policing have decided too many people are passing the online assessment centre well of course they are because I'm showing them how to pass it it's the most formulaic process I've ever come across oh my goodness it really is follow my guidance I'll show you what to do, you do the hard work, you will pass. I guarantee it, I actually do guarantee it. If you don't pass, I give you a full refund. I'm just thinking, that looks like I've got a light growing out of my head, doesn't it? Um, and so here we are today, uh, let's see if you can see it. Can you see it there on the computer? That's the start of the exercise I've put together. I've just posted it in the client only group and the online assessment center plus webinars uh, client only group as well. If you want to know how to access those groups, then check, check the links below. If you're watching this on uh, Facebook or YouTube as a recording, if you're watching it live, ask in the comments. And please, if you like and love what you hear, or you've got any questions, then do post them. Press that like, love button. If you're watching this on YouTube, please do subscribe. Please do comment. Please do like, because it makes all the difference. Please, could you do that? It just helps YouTube and Facebook promote I do say promote because I want to help as many people as I can I'm in this awesome position of being able to help people to achieve their dreams and make a living out of it I mean how awesome is that that's the dream isn't it I lived the dream as a police officer for 28 years I've been coaching and supporting people for promotion board specialist interviews for 26 now and I've helped tens of thousands it's about 14,000 people to pass their uh, police recruitment process over the past decade so honestly I love what I do every day I get messages saying uh, couldn't have done it without you I've passed here's me in uniform it's just great I love it so anyway let's uh, read something to you about the national SIFT uh, practice situational judgment test that I've put together um, so I've said that uh, I have had it on good account from a reliable source that they've set it so that only 30% of everyone sits it passes it now forces can change that if they want so forces can make it bigger but they can't make it smaller so the standard is that only 30 percent of those of you who sit the national sift will pass it why are they doing that well like i said so many people are passing the online assessment center they can't afford it it's 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 expensive you've got to get assessors to assess everything that you write and say in the competency-based interview that's not really an interview because you're speaking to a camera um, in the written exercise, which is two hours worth of writings, so that's a lot of assessing, and the briefing exercise, which is 36 minutes worth of talking in total, answering 12 questions, three minutes per answer per question. So that's a lot of assessing. So if they can cut down on that and use some kind of assessment instrument to enable them to cut down on it, then great, because it saves them a fortune. But what it means is that so many of you will fail. Why? Because you're just acting naturally, just being yourself and answering the questions honestly. And that is the worst thing to do. Trust me, that's the worst thing to do. So what they're gonna do in, uh, how do you pass it by the way? You create yourself as the perfect avatar of the perfect police officer that you're going to be. Uh, Grace is saying, sorry Brendan, the pass mark is 30% and only 30% of applicants pass. No, Grace, good question, yeah. It confused me at first, but my reliable source tells me that only 30% of applicants pass. Only 30%. So 70% are set to fail. 70% are set to fail. So we've got to make sure we're in that top 30. Make sure we're in that top 30. Oh, by the way, a few shout outs to people who have just joined. 
uh, Mott and Andy, good evening to you, Roger and Matt and Nick and Jordan and Jack and Tom, Gaz and Brad and more of you, Al and Stephen and Grace and more and more of you. It's great to have you on board this evening. And if you're watching this on a, a recording, then you're welcome as well. So what's going to happen in the situational judgment test? Um, they're going to present you with a scenario. I'm going to read to you some of those possible scenarios. Uh, I've been reliably informed that my exercise is pretty close to the real thing. How, did I, how do I do that, by the way? Well, I've worked for and with the College of Policing on four occasions during my career, during previous incarnations when there were National Police Training and Sanchex, and also when there have been College of Policing. I used to run the Training for Trainers course, um, one of the satellites in uh, Greater Manchester uh, for, on behalf of National Police Training, which is now College of uh, Policing. So I've done a lot of work with them and I know how they think. I've designed exercises like this for use nationally when I was in training, training student officers. And I got to a position where I was actually um, compiling curriculum material for what was then National Police Training, uh, which then became Centrex. Um, and, and so I, I know how they think. So I put myself in the, in the mind of one of the assessment instrument writers. How? Because that's my thing. I studied this. I worked for them on four occasions and with them on four occasions. I've got a master's in education where I studied personnel evaluation systems. Um, I've got MVQ, MVQs, remember those? Assessor in internal, um, uh, uh, internal quality assurance qualifications. And I've got years of experience doing this kind of thing. So for me, it just took me a day in Spain. <laughs> Why am I in Spain, by the way? Some of you are thinking, what's he doing in Spain? Why is his family not with him? Uh, it's not a holiday. I'm actually cat sitting. My uncle needed to go away for four days and he needed someone to look after his cat. So here I am, cat sitting in Spain. A perfect opportunity to get some work done. <laughs> get some work done, Brendan. So they're going to give you a scenario with four possible actions that you could take. And you're going to be asked to rate each one of those four actions in terms of their effectiveness in addressing the scenario. And the scale you're going to have is this, counterproductive and inappropriate action that will have a negative impact or make the situation worse. Ineffective, a poor action that will not help to resolve the situation. Slightly effective, an action that would have a small positive impact on the situation. Effective, a reasonable action that would help resolve the situation. Very effective, one of the best actions that could be taken to resolve the situation. So it's not about picking the best one because you've still got to do the situational judgment test that's in the online assessment centre. Now that's mar marked uh, automatically for you, but in that one, you're given scenarios with four possible solutions. You've just got to pick the best one. In this one, you've got to rate them using five different ratings. That's a lot of thinking and headspace. So you need to get your head around what these um, tests uh, and these assessments involve. So here's some examples for you, and I have been told that they are pretty similar to the real deal. Um, like I said, uh, no internal spies or anything, no ethical spies. I just thought this morning, if I was a, co I actually imagined myself to be a college of policing assessor. I actually m imagined myself working from MPT Harrogate. It's now a, it's now a building site. It's been knocked down, but that was like the flagship. Um, a state for National Police Training, which is now College of Policing, um, the Harrogate Estate. Oh my goodness, it was awesome. It's like working in a country club. And I did several weeks, more than several weeks there. It's great. So um, here we go. Here's one for you. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments what you think. You know, you can press and pause, you can press pause when you're watching this on the recording. What do you think about these? So you arrive at your station and you're in the locker room putting on your protective equipment. Out of view, you can hear two constables, two of your colleagues who are both tutor constables, talking about one of your colleagues who's just started after completing their initial training. One of the officers refers to her as useless and the other replies by saying, I know, I don't know who's responsible for recruiting these days, but they've got it all wrong. There's no one else in the locker room. Possible responses. And remember, you've not got to pick the best one, You've got to rate them in terms of counterproductive, ineffective, slightly effective, effective and very effective. Remember, there could be two counterproductives or two very effectives or no very effectives and two effectives. And, uh, you know, this is tough stuff, you know. So possible responses. Um, immediately challenge the comments of your colleagues. Point out how what they have said shows a lack of respect towards others, even though they are not there and inform them you intend to report 
what has been said to your sergeant, even though you, you know this might make you unpopular with these officers. What do you think of that one? All right. You're going to challenge them. These are more experienced officers, tutor constables, respected officers on your shift. You're going to challenge them and inform them you intend to report what has been said to your sergeant, even though it's going to make you unpopular. How unpopular is that going to make you? Grace is saying effective. All right, let's hold on to that one. I welcome your response, Grace. Um, next possible response. Do not respond to the comments, but tell the officer referred to. Uh, oh, that doesn't make sense. Referred to what they said. Had, I need to rewrite that. Do not respond to the comments, but tell the officer um, that they referred to that what they what, about what they said so that she can make the decision as to what she wants to do. After all, the comments were made about her, not you. So basically, tell the officer who the comments were directed towards, even though she wasn't there, about what was said, and she could decide what to do. So that's another option. Number three, immediately ask the officers who made the comments what they meant by what they said, and then decide what to do, depending on the explanation they give. All right, so what do you think about that one? Fourth option, go straight to your sergeant and report what the officer said about your new colleague so that the sergeant can best decide on how to deal with this as they are more experienced than you and that this is their role. All right, so what do you think about those folks? Let me know in the comments. Um, I know it's hard to keep up with them, but you, this is what you've got to do. Grace is saying two is slightly effective. All right. I'm following your logic. I agree with you, Grace. Uh, that one is slightly effective. Um, four is slightly effective, so go straight to your sergeant and report what the officer said about you and your colleague so that they can decide. I'd say that's slightly effective as well. Uh, what about the first one? You're saying The first one you're saying is effective? Challenge the comments of your colleagues? Um, even though the person's not there, inform them how you intend to report what's been said to your sergeant, even though this might make you unpopular with these officers. Um, you said effective. I don't know. I'm going to go for very effective. What do you think of that, Grace? What do you think of that, everyone else? Um, let's see what else. Um, what do you think about... Oh, number four, you're saying... Grace is saying slightly effective. Uh, go straight to your sergeant. Yeah, OK. I'm, I'm with you... What about number three, Grace? Immediately ask the officers who made the comments what they meant by what they said and then decide what to do depending on the explanation they give. These are tough, aren't they? Shall I give you an operational one? Let me know. Give me, actually, give me some likes and loves if you want me to do an operational one. So that's the sort of in the station one. Uh, let me scroll through them. I've got 12 here. I'm going to do another eight tomorrow. Um, Grace is saying I wasn't sure between a very effective or effective. Um, number three, immediately ask the officers and made the comments what they meant and by what they said and decide what to do depending on the explanation they give. I'm going to go for, I agree with you, Grace, slightly effective. Slightly effective. Um, yeah, because it's almost like you're sitting on the fence a little bit and not making a decision. Why is number one basically grass up your best mates? <laughs> Why is that the most effective one? Well, they're showing a lack of respect towards a fellow officer. Um, a lack of respect would be a breach of the code of ethics. It could also be discriminatory, which is a breach of the code of ethics. What does the code of ethics tell you if you witness any breach of the, of the code of ethics, which could possibly be a misconduct? You are to uh, challenge the behaviour, question the behaviour and report it to your sergeant or inspector. So that is why the first one is, I would say, well, I, I wrote this, so... <laughs> It's my opinion, but there's, there's 36 years, hang on, how many? Thir yeah, 36 years of policing experience that goes into that opinion. So, and all my, all my, just uh, all that life experience, all that job experience I told you about. So, um, that's the one, even though it's going to make you unpopular, that's the one that's most effective. All right, should we do an operational one? No one's giving me any likes or loves. Give me some likes and loves and I'll do an operational one. Come on, am I just talking to myself here? Do some shout outs, by the way. Abby, welcome to you. Uh, Shara and James, Suzanne, Neve, um, Scott, Steve, Alina, Alenia, Iona, Camelia. Oh, it's great to have you all on board. Ian and Reese, 
uh, Debbie, Adam, Harry, uh, Robert, uh, Hannah, Lau. Oh, it's great, great, awesome to have you all on board. Um, and Neb as well, and Neb. All right, let's find a operational one. Um, you can get all of these, by the way, in my client-only group, um, and you're going to get them on the online course soon as part of the, the package of measures that will help you get through the online assessment centre and the National SIFT. If you're already on my online assessment centre course, watch out in the next few days. Uh, once I get back from Spain, I'm going to upload a few more videos and um, my practice for not just this the situational judgment test, but my practice for the uh, behavioural styles questionnaire as well, the new National SIFT. You want to be outside of that um, 70% that are going to fail. You want to be in that 30% that are going to pass. And remember, forces can raise it a little bit if they want, but I'm reliably informed that the standard national standard is only 30% are going to pass the national sift. That's what it's there for. It's what it says on the side of the tin. It's a sift. Um, oh, how about this one? You attend a report of a detained shoplifter at a grocery convenience store. The manager states how they saw them take meat off the shelves with a value of £10.45. Why I picked £10.45, I don't know. Uh, they put it in the shopping bag then walked out the store without paying. You discover the person detained as a single father of two children aged 26, unemployed due to a disability and with no previous convictions or cautions. They tell you how they stole the meat because they have no money to buy any food for their children. The manager of the store demands they be arrested for theft as they're losing hundreds of pounds every week just to th due to theft from the store. They also tell you how they believe a lack of action from previous reports has only encouraged offenders to view this store as an easy target for theft. So possible responses, folks. Come on, let's get into this. Let's get into the game. Um, let's see what you think. Are they counterproductive? Are they effective, very effective, slightly effective, or count, uh, counterproductive or not effective at all? So first one, arrest a person detained on suspicion of theft. They've stolen food from the store, have admitted to it, have admitted to it, and they need to be brought to justice for what they've done, especially as the victim is losing so much money from thefts from his store. So that's one option. That's option one. As the suspect has taken food to feed his children, arrange for him to receive help from social services and direct him to the local food bank. Ask him to say sorry and promise it will not happen again. There's another option. Take details of the suspected offender with a view to further investigating his claims in order that he can get the right level of support from the likes of social services. You can decide on a course of action in respect of the theft at a later date. Number four, as the meat has possibly been contaminated and cannot be put back on the shelves, arrange with the store manager for the suspected offender to keep the meat so his children can be fed and require the man to make a weekly payment of one pound to pay off his debt. So in 10 weeks, it'll be all paid off. It'll actually be 11 weeks. What do you think, folks? What would you do? Actually, it's not about what you would do. It's about which ones of these that you believe are... Uh, let's go through it again. Counterproductive, ineffective, slightly effective, effective, or very effective. And you've got a pick. And like you said, two of them could be ineffective, one of them effective, one very effective, one counterproductive. It's it's a real mishmash. So, but you've got to you've got to put down not what you believe in now, but what you believe the best version of your future constable self would do. The one that as the DNA, the very DNA of the code of ethics in their blood system. The one that, that has the competency and values framework, framework flowing through their arteries. This is you who is the super cop, the best cop that the College of Policing could ever produce, the best cop that you're ever gonna be. This is how to answer the questions, folks. This is how to make sure you get 30%. And of course, follow my guidance. Check the links below. That's where you'll find, actually, there's a superb offer at the moment uh, with up to 50% um, off my um, courses. Um, take advantage of them because the prices will go back up to normal soon. You're going to get the online assessment centre with webinars, as many webinars as you want to watch and all the recordings for £89 instead of £159. Oh, my goodness. Um, that's pretty good, eh? What do you think? Uh, Grace is saying that number one is ineffective. Grace, thank you for playing, by the way. Let's just go to the example. What's happening to the rest of you? Um, I know, it's complex, isn't it? But I know Grace is into this stuff. And by being into this stuff, you are going to, you're going to do well. 
you're going to pass it. You're going to pass it. Um, where is it? Where is that one again? Oh, there it is. Um, you're saying that number one is ineffective. Arrest a person detained on suspicion of theft. They've stolen food from the store, admitted to it, need to be brought to just justice what they've done, especially as the victim is losing so much money from thefts from his store. It's very victim focused. I disagree with you, Grace. Why do you say ineffective? I disagree. You've got a power of arrest. This person's arrested. Uh, this person's stolen food from the store. They've admitted to it. Um, the victim's losing hundreds of pounds a, a, a week due to theft from the stores. Victim focused. Um, is it necessary? Mm, as a thing. Is it necessary to arrest them? To investigate for the prompt and effective investigation of the offence that they've been arrested for? To obtain evidence by questioning? You might want to consider a house search. What else has he been stealing? <laughs> Grace is saying, I feel sorry for him. I was trying to help the poor dad. Well, what are you going to do when you've got someone in tears in front of you? pleading because you've caught them drink driving and they're going to lose their job and possibly their livelihood and everything around them is collapsing and I've been in that situation 10 o'clock in the morning in 1987 I stopped someone driving to work with his wife um, it was a, a Friday morning uh, he'd been out on a Christmas do the night before I could smell alcohol in his breath and um, I asked him, required him to provide a sample of breath he did, he failed it got arrested he was in tears pleading with me pleading begging with me and I knew his wife was just in bits I knew that was their mortgage livelihood everything down the drain because he needed a car for his job yeah I felt for him but I got a job to do so I'm not gonna say it's very effective but I'm gonna say it's effective that one um, you, you can't feel you can care about people but don't feel sorry for him do I feel as though any of them are very effective? Um, I think take the details of the suspected offender with a view to investigating his claims in order he can get the right level of support from the likes of social services. You can decide on the course of action in respect of the theft at a later date. I'd go for that one. It's not saying that you are, you, you are going to arrest him. It's not saying that you're not going to take action. It's not saying that you're not going to um, bring him to justice and have him receive a caution or go down the route of restorative justice or interview him at a later date and see what he's got to say and then make a decision after that so i'm going to say that that one is um very effective and he's going to get the right support as well um it's not necessary i would say to make an arrest there and then um i think you could get away with it under code g i think a custody officer would probably question you a lot as to your rationale for it being necessary to arrest him there and then um, especially if he's got no previous convictions or cautions what's your justification for um, wanting to carry a house search uh, so yeah I'm, I'm gonna go just for slightly effective maybe effective for that first one slightly effective uh, the one I like the most is uh, helping to get helping them to get the support and making a decision at a later date. Uh, counterproductive, I would say, is the meat being contaminated, can't be put back on the shelves. Uh, suspected offender keeps his meat so children can be fed and require him to pay a weekly payment of £1 to pay off his debt. That's never going to happen. And you're going to get involved in all sorts of personal debt issues. It's just not going to happen. So there you go, folks. Anyway, I'm going to sign off now. That's just two of them. And thank you, for Grace, for getting involved. Um, your heartstrings were pulled there, weren't you? Your heartstrings, poor heartstrings were pulled. Uh, Damo and Katie and uh, Glenn and Nathan, who've just joined us, I'm about to go now. And Alexandra and Jay and Daniel and George and Nathan and Neb. Oh, loads of you. Oh, it's great to have you on board this evening. Anyway, it looks like it's going to rain, actually. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. This, actually, these are called the Camilla clouds, I believe. Um, it's, it's dust uh, come from the Sahara. Uh, I'm right on the edge of the desert here. You can see these mountains. Um, it's where all the spaghetti westerns were filmed. Um, anyway, I'm going to go now. I'm going to sign off, make myself a little bit of dinner. I'm on my own at the moment. Well, I'm not. I've got to look after a cat. <laughs> oh, that, that's not the cat. That's a cheeky cat that's been in the house eating the poor 
poor Binky's food. That's what happens in Spain. It's cat eat cat. <laughs> Is that the phrase? Dog eat dog, cat eat cat. Eat cat. Um, all right. Uh, Grace is saying, thanks for this, Brendan. Super helpful. Have a nice holiday. It's not holiday. I've been working hard today, producing all this material. Actually, I had to swim. Like I said, I had to swim in that. Um, my uncle's pool. Um, I watered all the plants. That's his orchard at the back as well. Citrus grove. Uh, what a lovely place he's got. I love it. Um, anyway, it's so quiet at the moment. Normally come here with the kids and, and Mrs. Mrs. Blue Light. But yeah, it's so quiet. So quiet. But anyway, I'll do another one tomorrow from uh, sunny Spain. And uh, look forward to catching up with you all very, very soon. Have a good evening, everyone. And bye-bye uh, for now.